Catholic family, Edith Stein. Because we're Jewish. I know. I'm so afraid. Remember the words of our Lord. Do not fear those who kill the body but are unable to kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Come, let us give our lives for our people so that all Jews convert to Catholicism and are saved from the Nazis. We've come for Edith and Rosa Stein, the nuns with Jewish blood. But for the love of God, they're Carmelite nuns. They've done nothing wrong. Here we are. Get in the car. Sisters, may God be with you. We will pray for you always. Thank you, sister. God, my father, will never abandon me. Mom? What is it, Sarah? If Edith was Jewish, why was she in a Catholic Carmelite convent? Edith was born into a Jewish family, but she converted to Catholicism and became a Carmelite nun. Her sister Rosa did the same, and they were both at the same convent when the Nazis came to take them away. Ah, now I understand. You see, Edith was the youngest of 11 brothers and sisters. Her father died when she was only two, and her mother had to raise the family on her own. Poor thing! Edith was a very intelligent girl, and she wanted to go to school before she was six. Her mother had to work hard to persuade the principal to let her daughter start school. I'm very sorry, Mrs. Stein, but the school rules do not allow me to admit any girl before she's six years old. Oh, please, Mr. Principal. I'm sure she'll be able to keep up with the rest of the class. But the rules say... Oh, please, sir. Very well. She can start school. But if she can't keep up with the class, we'll have to send her home again. Is that clear? Thank you. I promise that you won't regret this. And three months later, Edith was already the top of her class. That's because she was very smart, right, Mom? That's right. Helen, Sarah, a letter just arrived from Aunt Anna. She's coming to visit us and she'll be arriving tomorrow. Is Cousin Elisa coming too? Of course. They're all coming. Aunt Anna, Uncle Paul, and Cousin Elisa. Hooray! This afternoon, my Cousin Elisa's coming. Excellent. The three of us can all play together. What games does she like? Does she have a lot of toys? I have no idea. I've never met her. You've never met your own cousin? She's always lived overseas. I've only seen her in photos. That's crazy. You have a mystery cousin. I'm kind of worried about it. I don't know if we'll get along. You get along with everyone, so don't worry. Well, maybe. But what will she be like? I know, honey. We're all excited about seeing your aunt and uncle and cousin Elisa. They're here! Hi there. Hello. Hello, Thomas. Hi, everyone. Well, look at you two. Haven't you grown? Helen. Anna, it's so great to see you after all these years. Yes, we've been out of the country for far too long. Elisa, aren't you going to say hi to your cousins? Why don't you guys go play together? Right. You can show Elisa your rooms and your toys. We adults have so much to talk about. Do you like the Fantastic Girls? Of course. Come on, then. I'll show you my stickers. Have a seat. You must be hungry. As a matter of fact, we're fine. We stopped to eat on the way here. We've been looking forward to seeing you. So have we. Elisa's been so excited, you can't imagine. I see that you guys are as Catholic as ever. A picture of the Virgin, another of St. Joseph. 
And I suppose that must be the guardian angel, right? That's right. You know that we like to remember that we're children of God. And are you still an atheist? You haven't fallen off your horse like St. Paul. You know that some engineers only believe in math and physics. That's what makes the world go round. God, if he even exists, is much too far away. We've tried to bring up Elisa to be a good girl. But without mentioning God. But you did have her baptized. Yes, that's right. I was baptized myself, and look at me. You could say that I'm a non-practicing Catholic. Have you found a school for Elisa? Yes, we're trying to get her in at the international school. It's a private school with a great reputation. Yes, we know it. It's a non-religious school. That's right. We don't want Elisa to go to a religious school. We don't want her to be influenced by religious ideas. When she's an adult, she can make up her own mind. Alex and Sarah are at the Salesian School, and we're very happy with it. Of course, you two are practicing Catholics, but we aren't. We prefer an education that's, how can I put it, more neutral. Your house is full of pictures of the Virgin and crucifixes. Yes, it's because we're Catholics, aren't you? Well, I don't think so. In my house, no one ever talks about God. Really? Hmm? I decorated my room with pictures of the fantastic girls. Me too, look! You have posters of the fantastic girls too. Of course, just because you have a crucifix or a picture of the Virgin doesn't mean you can't have fantastic girls posters too. Do you get good grades? Yes. Me too, do you like to read? Of course! Well, I brought tons of books with me. Did you know I won first prize for creative writing at my old school? Really? Yes, my favorite books are biographies of important people. You know, great explorers or inventors. I've just read The Life of Madame Curie. I like to read The Lives of Saints because you can learn a lot from them. Oh, The Lives of Saints? People who spend their whole time praying? That's right. Some of them are really brave. Right now, I'm reading about Edith Stein, a saint who was murdered by the Nazis. She was murdered? Yes, because she was from a Jewish family. Edith was really smart. She studied philosophy and history, and she spoke six languages. She was an assistant to a famous professor, Edmund Hussle, at Freiburg University in Germany. I like reading about famous women. Well, Edith became very famous. She spoke at conferences all over Europe. By the way, congratulations. You remembered my birthday. Of course. How could I forget? I'd forgotten it myself with all the excitement of the journey. A book! You know, that's the best present you could possibly give me. I know. You've always loved reading. But this is a very special book. Is it really? It's The Life of Edith Stein. Yes, I've heard of her before. She was a philosopher, right? Yes, she was a great defender of the rights of women. She was. Oh, she sounds like me. That's why I gave it to you. She was a member of an organization called the Prussian Association for Women's Suffrage. She was famous for her conference appearances. Sisters, we too must have the right to vote. We are not second-class citizens compared to men. We must put an end to medieval chauvinism. We are living in the 20th century. You know that I am not a believer, so I will not beg any god for help. We are alone in our fight, and our strength will lead us to victory. Edith was born into a Jewish family, but she lost her faith during her student years. <laughs> That's why you gave me this book, because Edith's life was a little like mine, wasn't it? I think you'll like it. <laughs> it's going to take more than a book to convert me. When the First World War broke out, Edith became a nurse and worked in a military hospital. They were difficult times. Edith cared for patients with typhus and helped in the operating theater. How is he? He's dying. Listen, Edith, when you need a break, tell me. You should try to rest for a while. I can't allow the last thing he sees to be this hospital's filthy ceiling. Edith saw 
saw many young soldiers die. When the war ended, she was awarded a medal for her dedication to her work at the hospital. She's so brave, I couldn't stand to see people dying. And Edith wrote, not science, but devotion to life has the last word. Because she realized that the most beautiful thing in the world was to serve others. That was more important than being intelligent and studying for years and years. How wonderful! At last we'll be living in the same town. Don't you think that's great? <laughs> What's the matter? Do you know why we're here? <laughs> Paul was transferred here, wasn't he? We requested the transfer. Paul needs an operation for a stomach tumor. I'm so sorry. It's a very complicated operation. Elisa doesn't know anything about it. We didn't want to tell her. <laughs> we'll all pray that the operation is a success. You'll see, Paul will soon be well again. Pray? Do you have any idea how long it's been since I prayed? That's not important now. I don't know. I suppose I don't really believe in praying. Here, we'll pray for the intercession of Edith Stein. Remember? Your kindred spirit. Sister Patricia, tell us about Edith Stein. Well, she was a very intelligent woman. We know that already. Tell us how she converted to Catholicism. Well, as you know, she was Jewish. One summer, she went to stay at the house of a friend who had just been widowed. That summer was very important in her life. Are you sure you feel all right? Yes, thank you, Edith. Thank you for coming. Thank you. You're teaching me a great lesson. Me? Why? I was expecting to find you depressed and crying all day, but I can see that you feel a great sense of peace. Oh, Edith, I have cried. I've cried a lot. But God has given me strength to survive these moments. I know that my husband is in heaven. I would like to be like you, to have the same inner peace as you. I left a book in your room. Read it. Maybe you'll find the answers you're looking for in there. The book was The Life of St. Teresa of Avila. Edith stayed up all night reading it. That was the night of her conversion. The Catholic religion is the true one. This is what I have been looking for all my life. Reading St. Teresa, Edith was converted to Catholicism. So you can be converted by a book? Of course. Sometimes God makes use of very simple things to reach the soul of a person who is searching for the truth. You mean that God can talk to me too? Edith was baptized, and she wanted her friend to be her godmother, even though she was a Protestant. And what did her family say? Because they were Jews, weren't they? Yes. Edith went to see her mother. Mother, I'm a Catholic. I will pray that you return to the faith of Israel. I'm more Jewish than ever now. Jesus Christ was Jewish. They knew that their lives were drifting apart. They would both pray and offer their lives to God, but they would follow different paths. And is that when she became a nun? Yes. In fact, she began to hear God's call very soon, but her confessor advised her to wait. Father, I believe that God is calling me to a life of contemplation. I want to become a nun. That is very good, my daughter. But you must wait a while. You can do so much good by teaching and appearing at conferences. You're famous all over Europe. And you can do the apostolate among the intellectuals. Very well. I will devote myself to bringing the intellectuals closer to God. This is your path for the time being. Edith was like me. She got good grades and won prizes. She was a very intelligent woman, and she was full of joy at having discovered God. I hope that God makes me happy one day, too. You can start by offering a little prayer to Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. That was how Edith decided to begin to have a religious life. 
One day, Edith was praying to Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. When God showed her her vocation to Carmel, on that day, Edith decided to become a Carmelite nun. Mother, I'm going to enter a Carmelite convent. You're going to become a nun? Yes, I'm very happy. But Edith, a person can also lead a religious life as a Jew. Yes, unless they have seen a different way. She gave up everything to become a religious sister? Yes, that's right. But she was a famous woman. Everyone respected her. She even fought for women's rights. Well, she gave all that up. Fame, prizes, recognition. She gave it up for the love of Jesus. She entered the Carmelite convent in Cologne when she was 42 and took the name of Sister Teresa Benedicta of the Cross. Of course, she was called Sister Teresa in honor of St. Teresa of Avila. Yes, because thanks to St. Teresa, she had found God and converted to Catholicism. That's amazing. Do you realize that she could have been the most famous female philosopher of the 20th century? Yes, if she had carried on teaching and giving lectures. But she gave it all up for love. And the most important part is that she did it gladly. We'll ask Edith Stein to intercede to make your operation a success. I'm very grateful, but I don't believe in these things. Honey, I know we never pray, but maybe now would be a good time. Okay, if that's what you want. We have nothing to lose by praying. Edith entered the Carmelite convent in Cologne, but Cologne is in Germany, which in those days was controlled by the Nazis. The Nazis killed millions of Jews. Yes, and since Edith was from a Jewish family, she and her sister Rosa had to move to the convent in Echt in Holland. The two of them took refuge there. I want to write my will. The soldiers will soon come for me. If they kill me, I want to offer my life for the Jewish people so that they convert to Catholicism. May God help them see the truth. I also offer my life so that the Nazi soldiers may let the Jewish people live in peace and end the persecution of them. Then, one night, the Nazi soldiers took Edith and her sister Rosa prisoner. Did they take them to a concentration camp? Yes. It's, it's incredible how Edith managed to remain at peace knowing she was going to be killed. Do you mean the nun who died in a concentration camp? Yes, this book is extraordinary. Edith tried to console the women who were held there and cared for their children. Don't be afraid, my daughter. You must be strong. Sister, this is... <laughs> They're going to kill us all. I will stay with you. Come here. I'll just comb your hair. Don't cry, little one. Sister, you're an angel. God gives us his strength and his grace to live and to die. Soon all this will be over, and we will be with him forever. While she was in the concentration camp, Edith sent a telegram to her mother superior at the convent in Act. What she said to her was incredible. One cannot acquire the science of the cross without truly suffering the weight of the cross. From the very first, I have been convinced of this and have told myself from the depths of my heart, hail, O cross, my only hope. You know, Paul, your illness is our cross. We must accept it and offer it to God. Where's Paul? They've taken him to run the last tests before the operation. I'm so worried. It's all right, Anna. Paul is in good hands. Is that a holy card of Edith Stein? Yes, Paul and I have entrusted ourselves to her intercession. Yes, we have done the same.
Anna, darling, this is incredible. What is? How did it all go? How did it go? You tell her, doctor. Well, I... I can't give you a scientific explanation for what's happened, but... The fact is that the tumor has completely disappeared. It's what? But that's impossible. The last time he had a checkup, the tumor was there. They told us that... I know. I have the report. But believe me, there's no tumor now. Honey, that's wonderful news. Anna, we have to give thanks to God. We've decided to start praying. We want to start going to Mass again, and... Do you think they'll have a place for Elisa at the Salesian School? Sure, but we'll have to enroll her today. Edith was taken to the gas chamber. That's where she died. Her last words were the Lord's Prayer. Wow! That was an amazing story. I had no idea that the saints had such interesting lives. That's why I like to read the lives of the saints. I learned so much. It's wonderful that Paul, Anna, and Elisa have found their Catholic faith again. Yes, and we should give thanks to God. And to the intercession of Edith Stein. 